Chapter 18, Notification Appliance Circuits. To understand the requirements for selecting, placing, and configuring audible and visible notification appliance in the fire alarm system in accordance with NFPA 72 Chapter 18. This includes horns, strobes, speakers, and combination devices used for notifications. Notification appliance are output devices used to alert building occupants for the murder for a fire or emergency condition. They fall into two main categories. Audible appliances, horns, bells, chimes, and speakers, and then we have visual appliances, which is strobes and visual indicators. Then there's combination devices where we have horn strobes and speaker strobes. There are also chime strobes as well. So in chapter 18.4.3 speaks about the sound pressure requirements. In the public, you must produce a minimum of 15 decibels above the average ambient sound level five decibels above the maximum ambient level lasting at least 60 seconds. Minimum sound level is 75 decibels at the pillow. When you're sleeping, it's minimum 75 decibels at the pillow level when you're measuring the sound level. So if you're inside a commercial space and the average ambient sound is 50 decibels, the horn strobe must deliver at least 65 decibels so that way you're able to hear. Exodus chapter 18.4, Dot two, dot one, temporal pattern. Fire alarm horns must sound a standard temporal three pulse pattern, often called a cold three. This would be used with coded systems. You will see on the pulse station, it would be like a one, four, one. So if that pulse station activates, it will spit out a coded pattern, one, then a four, then a one. It will be a pause in between each one. So that way you can identify quickly if you know it, oh, that's the pulse station second floor stair B. Chapter 18.5 speaks about visible notification appliances. Strobes are rated in candela, a measurement of light intensity. So some of the values are 15, 30, 75, and 110 candela. That is the flash intensity for a person who is who may be blind, but they can still feel the pulse if the fire alarm system is actually flashing. So some of the standard values for the candela rating is 15, 30, 75, and the high candela rating is 110 and more. The required candela rating depends on the room size, ceiling height, the mounting location, and also the viewing angle. So all of these factors must come into place when you're actually figuring out what type of candela rating you need to use when you're setting up the strobes. Chapter 18.5.5.4.3, speaks about synchronization. Multiple strobes in the same field of view must flash in unison. You may need to install a sync module, but some of the newer devices do work two wide and they all can sync if they come straight off the same power supply. This is required by the ADA compliance. Unsynchronized strobes can trigger seizures and confusion. So all of the strobes must sync in unison. Over in the chapter 18.4.4, and 24.4, this is for voice evacuation. This is used for large occupancies like high rises, school, assembly places, colleges and dorms, large assembly places like that. Speakers will broadcast the pre-recorded voice message in addition to the tones. The tones is the alert tones that will play over the speakers to let you know that someone is making an announcement. This also must comply with chapter 24 in addition to chapter 18 in FPA 72. Chapter 18.5.3.4.1 deals with ceiling mounted strobes. Ceiling strobes must be mounted in the center at all possible whenever you're mounting your ceiling, your ceiling strobes, your ceiling speaker strobes, or your ceiling horn strobes. A wall mounted horn strobe must be mounted between 80 and 96 inches to the center or, or to the light above the finished floor. Chapter 18.5.5.3 and 18.4.5.3 speaks about sleeping areas. They must include high intensity horn strobes, 110 candela minimum. Low frequency sound is at 520 hertz. This is required for dorms, assisted living, and apartment units when required by the code. So you will have to use low frequency sound bases or low frequency horn strobes while people are sleeping so that way you're not scaring them when they wake up. Restrooms and public spaces. Small rooms do not require a separate strobe if it's adjacent spaces visible, meaning if I could see the other side and I could see the strobe down the hall, I don't need to put another strobe in there because I can visually see the next one that's there. So 18.6.5 
talks about the room coverage and candela rating. Here we have a typical diagram of what a 20 by 20 room, 30 by 30 or 40 by 40, what type of candela rating should be set for that particular strobe in a room that size. So that is the end of module two. I catch you in module three where we command control. This is where we learn about HVACs, elevator shutdown, fan shutdowns, and all those different functions when it comes to the output activation. All right, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.